Hey people, how are you doing? It's Elsa Nation. A good start to the video. I'm dropping stuff already. So, yes, gonna carry on looking at the starting a 30k Legion Army Doodah. You know the, you know the score. Um, it's been. I've had a little bit of a break from doing these, mainly down to my own personal issues and some douchebags on the internet. But hey ho, it happens. So, um, what we're gonna do today, and this one I think's been kind of people have wanted to see this sort of thing kicking into gear a bit more for a little while so um, I thought I'd go for it so we're gonna have a look at tips tactics and rules for ultramarines in a 30k uh, heresy era sort of army so we're gonna have a look at the rules what they do um, where they might be good what they might be used we're gonna have a look at some of the troops choices might be a bit of a long video so if it is go get yourself a coffee we're gonna go over this um, there will be mistakes, I can guarantee that now, so if there are, just let me know, that's fine, I don't mind, but just remember, not everyone's right, if you think you're right, just go back, read the rules again, double check you are, and let's approach this like grown-ups, not like little children. If you are a little children watching this video, then fine, I don't mind, but if you are grown-up acting like a little child, then I do mind. So let's get on with this. So, Ultramarines. Legion Ezastati. So they the your basic troops have this Legion Ezastati's rules, uh, brackets Ultramarines, okay? Which all the legions do. Um, so this mainly applies to people on the ground, okay? You don't the vehicles and stuff like that don't have this rule, Legion Ezastati's. Unless there's a bit of a variation and stuff like Dreadnoughts, I don't think have them either. So that is one to make sure you're aware that that unit itself has the Legion as a special rule. So a lot of people didn't twig on that and I'll explain why on this actual next rule here. So this is the main main thing you kind of really want to base the Ultramarines on, uh, your tactics and a way to use it. So um, it's got this thing called Interlocking Tactics. Um, uh, they got a little spiel here about uh, they pride themselves on all things unity and purpose and seamless tactical integration in battle for many years. Ago. Basically, some spiel about stuff. We're gonna we're just gonna concentrate on rules here. Uh, whenever a unit with the Legion as a starter's brackets Ultramarine special rule makes a shooting attack against a target which has already been successfully hit in the same shooting phase by another Ultramarine's unit. And then there's a little star thing to it. They may, they sorry, they may reroll ones uh, to wound or penetrate the target's armor. This does not affect snapshots or blast weapons. Okay, so that's that's the first off point of call. Um, snapshots don't work. So if you're running with like a heavy squad and you want a snapshot, it doesn't work. Okay, and also blast weapons like plasma. Uh, cannons don't work with that. So that's one to bear in mind. Now this uh, Ultramarines unit, and then you've got the little special star thing. So I'll read this out. For the purposes of the special rule, an Ultramarines unit is defined as any unit in the same detachment drawn from the Space Marine Legion Crusade Army list, except super heavy vehicles, flyers, servo automata, and battle automata of any kind. Okay, so first off, your Mechanicum stuff doesn't work really. Okay, super heavies also doesn't work, and flyers doesn't work. However, what it doesn't say in there is vehicles, so tanks, stuff like that, fine. Skimmers, jet bikes, also fine. Other units, fine. Also, even other transport tanks like rhinos, drop pods, stuff like that, it doesn't rule them out. So, this would be my thought. If you want to utilize this special rule, you want to use your sort of your uh, unimportant shooting on your targets first so that then your ground units get a better chance to kill now um let's also see there's another rule here whenever a unit with the legion as a starties ultramarine special rule uh, charges a unit which is already engaged in assault by another ultramarine's unit uh, and fails to reach the target owing to a failed charge range roll, this roll must be re-rolled. Okay, so that's quite cool. So basically, your guys are really good at helping each other out, from what I understand. Um, now, 
this is also um, something you need to be aware of as well. This whole re-rolling ones to wound and penetrate is only for things with the Legionnaires Astartes special rule, brackets ultra, ultramarines. So, you know, as I was saying at the beginning, tanks, they don't have that rule. So that is one to bear in mind. You're not going to be able to hit something with a rhino and then pop it with a land raider. It doesn't work like that. However, what it does mean is all your ground troopers are now a lot more lethal. So, what? what how would I utilize this? Um, special uh, heavy weapon squads. Um, special weapon squads as well, like tactical support squads. If they've got a... Uh, melter guns in the squad and you've got uh, armor penetration um, it says armor penetration rolls of one so that if you're in melter range and you get the 2d6 to me that says that you don't re-roll both dice you just re-roll that one dice that's a one which makes tank popping a lot easier also makes killing infantry units with stuff like plasma weaponry really handy however obviously blast plasma weaponry doesn't count so this is where it kind of you have to be careful with this. Uh, one thing I could see being really good is if you had a Master of Signals with a ten-man heavy Volkai squad in it. That would be absolutely disgusting. I've done that with the Night Lords, and it just deletes units. So you say that unit is gone, and it just deletes it. There's nothing you can really do. Basically, you'll have ten guys. They all get four shots. He strength six, AP five, or something like that. Um, with a Master Signal, you can boost it up to BS5, so if you're hitting on twos, so that's 40 shots hitting on twos, and then you'd be wounding on twos, and any ones you roll to wound, you get to re-roll that. Um, which makes it absolutely crazy. I mean, what you could do if you really want to go super beardy is throw a Librarian in there or something like that, um, and that you, that means you get to re-roll to hit. Um, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's something else which will give them reroll to hit. So you can make them a twin linked um, rerolling to wound squad. That would be very very nasty. I know it's only AP five, but even ten terminators are going to have trouble. Well, what are we talking about? Possibly about thirty five of those. Maybe I'll well, say thirty of those. Even ten terminators are going to have problem dealing with thirty of those. And any wounds they don't save will cause more wounds. So, yeah, that's one to think about. If you're going to go with Ultramarines, seriously, keep that in mind. 10-man Volkite unit with a Master of Signals. <laughs> Makes them brutal. Uh, Master of Signals actually play key to Ultramarines as well. But we'll, go in, we'll get into that. Uh, certainty and Resolve. Any model with the Legionnaires of Stasi's Ultramarine special rule takes fear and regrouping tests on an unmodified leadership value of 10. Hmm. Okay. So that's fair enough. So they're not going to... They're not going to... Um, now, this is interesting, actually. I need fear and regrouping tests. So that doesn't mean morale checks. Okay, that just means regrouping and fear. So that's not as great as you might think it is. So just bear that one in mind. Rigid Chain of Command. One potential disadvantage to the uncommon unity or uh, the Legion displays is its reliance on Rigid Chain of Command for its decision making, a chain that can be momentarily broken uh, if a unit commander is slain. Uh, if all the HQ units in Ultramarines Detachment are slain, their opponent gains an additional plus one victory point. In addition, if the army's warlord is slain, then every unit in the Ultramarines Detachment with the Legionnaires of Starty's Ultramarines special rule. Uh, must make a immediate pinning test with the exception of those with the independent character special rule or who have uh, who have had an independent character join their unit so okay so that's that's kind of interesting so if you've got independent characters you want to kind of keep them in the units just in case that happens uh, you don't want your guys running away so uh, Legion specific units, uh, in addition to those found in the Space Marine Legion Crusade Army list, the Ultramarines Legion has particular access to four additional unit types. So we've got the Invictarus uh, Suzerain squads. I don't know if I pronounce Suzerain, I don't know if I pronounce that properly, I don't really care. Uh, the Fulmentaris Terminator Strike squads, they're quite interesting. Uh, Locu Locutaris Storm squads and the Damocles Command Rhino. 
So, independent characters in the Legion also have access to two unique items of war gear, the Legatine Axe and the Mantles of Ultramara. Legion breacher squads with the Legion as Astartes Special Marine, uh, sorry, Legion as Astartes brackets Ultramarine Special Rule may also exchange their bolters for power swords for five points each. So you can make an entire army of breaches with swords. That'd be a nasty unit to deal with. Um, okay, so Invic, Taurus, Suzerain squads may be taken either as elite choices or in place of normal command squads. Uh, while four men Taurus Terminator strike squads are heavy support choices, Locutus, um, Locutar, Locutarus, or Taurus storm squads are fast attack choices, and a single Damocles Rhino uh, command rhino may be taken as a non compulsory HQ choice for the army. So uh, the Terminators, the Special Terminators are heavy, the um, Assault Marines are fast attack, uh, the Suzerain uh, squads in Victarus, I'm just going to call them that because it's easier, uh, these are the guys with the shields and the Artificer armor, these guys can be taken as Elite's choices or they can be taken as a command squad. So if you want them in your army and you don't have any Elite slots yet, they can be a command squad. So, one to bear in mind. So let's have a look at the Legatine Act. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, but I honestly don't care. Legatine, maybe. Um, so, uh, do, do, do. any model with the independent character, special uh, character type uh, with the Legion as a starting bracket. Ultramarine special rule may exchange the chainsaw or combat blade for a Legatine Axe for 20 points. So, Legatine Axe. Uh, strength is user, range nothing, AP2, melee, specialist weapon, and cutting strike. So, it's not quite as good as a power axe, you might say. However, let's carry on reading. So, they've got this cutting strike rule. Uh, so, any to hit ro uh, result of a 6 with this weapon wounds automatically. So, I'm just going to let that sink in for a little bit. That is old school rending for anyone that's played, uh, was it 5th or 4th edition? Basically, hit with a six causes a wound. So, yeah, that's pretty nasty. So you don't need to roll with like if you hit with sixes, they just cause wounds, and it's AP two as well. So this would actually be quite good against monsters and stuff like that. Everything with high toughness, because they can hopefully cut through it a little bit first hand, and then mm, the strength doesn't permit to, for it to last a long time afterwards. However, these guys have all got boarding shields as well and artificer armor. Um, sorry, I'm going on to the Invictaris. So, we'll see how that works with that. Mantles of Ultramar. Oh, you got a little spiel here. Uh, Mantle of Ultramar counts as a suit of artificer armor, granting a 2 plus armor save. In addition, it provides a feel no pain, a 5 plus special rule, and immunity to the blind special rule for the wearer only. Uh, a Praetor model with the Legion as a studies Ultramarine special rule may exchange their artificer armor for the mantles of Ultramar for 20 points. Mm, is that worth it? Is that worth it? 20 points, you get a 2 up armor save, but mm, if, if, you, if you're a Praetor, you've got artificer armor anyway. So you're paying 20 points for feel no pain. You could be better off getting an apothecary for 45 points. Um, and then it gives feel no pain to the entire squad. Uh, I, I'd be tempted to do that. However, if he's going to run it on his own for whatever reason, then yeah, maybe. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the Ultramarine's unique right of war, the Logos Lectora. So... Um, it's got all this spiel about blah, 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 whatever being command and linking units and stuff like that. So the effect, all models of Legion as a start is uh, Ultramarine Special Rule as well as Ultramarine's Dreadnoughts of any type in a detachment subject to the right of war gain a single particular benefit each turn from the following list. Okay, only one effect is used... Uh, at the time for the entire detachment. That was going to be my next question. The controlling player determines which effect applies at the beginning of each of their turns and the effect is constant until they choose again. So you can choose these. It doesn't say that you only do it once. You can basically choose this one over and over again. So here are the three. We've got full march. Any affected unit may reroll run distances. Nah, not that great. 
Hold fast any affected unit which remains stationary this turn may make snapshots at BS2. That could be quite handy ish. A retribution strike. All affected units gain the counter attack special rule. That could be pretty brutal. That could be very brutal. If you know you've got a load of world eaters coming at you and you're like, next turn they're going to hit. So you're like, okay, I'll give in the, everyone in the army counter attack, including dreadnoughts. So, and that's any type. So I'll have to read up on what counter attack does. In fact, I'm going to do that now. Bear with a second. Okay, so counter attack. I've just read it up. Counter attack just basically means if you get charged, you get an extra attack. So it's if as if you were charging. However, it doesn't say as if you were charging. So any benefits you would got you would get if you were charging don't apply. You just get an extra attack. So that could be quite handy. I mean, stuff with uh, like dreadnoughts and stuff like because it says it applies to all dreadnoughts of any type. So if you're a Leviathan dreadnought and you play that load of world is coming in you're still gonna get that extra attack as if you charge sadly the leviathan has a really cool uh rule if it does charge so hey ho but yeah that's um those are the different kind of things so you pick one of those at 10 is it is it any good don't know i tend to find with these rights of war they're a bit mm, hit and miss you've got to really play a kind of fluffy army to really get the best of this um I don't personally know if this would do me any favours in a battle. I haven't actually tried it, so who knows. Let me know if you've done this, if it works or not. That'd be cool. Uh, limitations. Detachments using this right of war must take an additional compulsory HQ choice in addition to that usually required by the force organisation chart. Uh, and the second compulsory choice must be either a Master of Signal console or a Damocles command right now. Surprise, surprise, we were saying we need a Master Signal over here. So, hey, oh, we could do that. Uh, detachment users' right of war must take an additional compulsory troops, uh, sorry, troops choice. In addition to that, uh, uh, usually, um, addition to that, usually required by the force organization chart. Okay. Uh, detachments using this right of war may not take more vehicles with either the tank or flyer type in total than they have uh, infantry units in the detachment so if you've got four troops choices or four units um, you can only have four tanks or flyers um, so it's a bit of a limitation there I'm not sure on that um, this this is the one thing which really kind of messes me up I, I, really wasn't happy about this one because I probably would have tried this out but it's not working for the way I'm going to do my army. Uh, units that are part of this detachment using the right of war may not deploy as infiltrators or interplay via deep strike. Normal reserves etc are however allowed so that does mean flyers. Okay this means that certain units which may only interplay in this fashion such as drop pods may not be taken as part of this detachment. That's a bugger because I was going to do a drop pod army. Well, I am going to do a drop pod army, so I cannot take this right of war. Hey ho. I might get some more stuff in the future, and then we'll see. I might try it out. But yeah. So that's the kind of right of wars. Those are special weapons. Those are what they can do. So let's have a look at some of the units here quickly. So we've got the Invictara Suzerain Squad. These guys are the guys with uh, shields and the axes. So, um,. You get five of them in squad, they're infantry, they've got bolt pistol, they've got a legatine axe, which is the special one we saw earlier. We've got boarding shield, frag and, cra frag and crack grenades, and artificer armor. So every single one of them has a two up armor save. Um, and they've also got five up against... Sh sh five up against combat, six up against shooting, or is it the other way around? I can't remember. Uh, special rules, legion is Astartes, ultramarines... Um, so that would be quite handy if they're, if a, one of your units is engaged and this one tries to charge in but it fails it, it gets to re-roll that. So that's quite handy. They've got Implacable Advance, which I believe, I might be wrong, might make them a scoring unit. Uh, Lords of Ultramar, Chosen Warriors and Honor Bearers. Um, they can take a Land Raider Phobos or Land Raider Proteus as a dedicated transport. They cost 200 points for five of them. Uh, you can have five additional ones at 25 points each, so you're looking at uh, 425 
points for a 10 man squad so it's pretty brutal um, they're going to be nasty though um, so any of them can exchange their bolt pistol for a plasma pistol for 15 points so all of them can have plasma pistols um, and they can also change the axe for a thunder hammer that's pretty cool so you could have one guy rocking around with a thunder hammer uh, Lords of Ultramar Units with the Legion as Astartes, Ultramarine Special Rule, as well as allied, detachments, uh, allied Detachment Units drawn from either the Solar Auxilia or Imperialis Militia Army list within 12 inches of an Invictorus Suzerain model, uh, which itself is not pinned or falling back, gain a plus one modifier to their leadership value to a maximum of 10. So basically these guys inspire everyone. That's fair enough. Uh, any model in this squad may issue except challenges. That's quite handy. Uh, honor bearers. Uh, 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 uh. So I'll read this out just so. Okay. As well as being an elite choice in their own right, an Invictor Suzerain squad may be chosen instead of a command squad for any Praetor of the Ultramarines Legions, as well as any other Ultramarines model with a Master of the Legion special rule. Okay, so maybe there's some characters that might work. If this is the case, then one of the Invictorus Suzerains must exchange their boarding shield for a Legionnaire, Legion um, standard as an Invictorus Ancient and must be appropriately modelled as well. So it's saying you have to model it with the standard bearer. So, okay, fair enough. It's probably more just to be like, you can't just move it around squad. So, um, would I take them as a command squad? Maybe, maybe. Um, how would I get these guys into battle? I my army is based around the drop pod army, so um, I'm, I'm going for stuff that's deep striking. I'm using the orbital assault right of war, so I have to pick something that's deep strikes. Now I need to double check on this because part of my plan kind of hinges on this. Is the Cestus assault or Castus assault ram? I think it can deep strike. If it can, these guys are probably going in that. And I'm just going to punch a hole, a really big hole with this, because these guys will be able to assault on the turn they, well, not on the turn they arrive, but they'd be able to assault out of that. If I was taking ground units, I'd probably throw these guys into a uh, land raider, uh, because there's only 10 of them. Uh, maybe a Spartan, but a Spartan's got the capacity to take a lot more models, so mm, I'm not sure, like, hog hogging up a Spartan with just 10 guys, or maybe even 11, depending if you've got some other dudes. Yeah, that might be worthwhile. Um, okay, so you've got Honored Telemachus. He's a Dreadnought. Um, weapon skill 6, BS 5, Strength 7, Front Armor 13, Side Armor 12, Rear Armor 10, Initiative 4, 3 attacks, H uh, 4 hull points. 4 hull points? Okay, that's different. He's got 4 hull points. Uh, he's a vehicle walker, adrenal close combat weapon with inbuilt combi bolter, Kier's assault cannon, extra armor, smoke launcher, searchlight. So that's kind of handy having extra armor, so it means uh, if he gets stunned or anything, that doesn't really take effect. Or no, if he gets crew stunned, yeah, it just makes it crew shaken or something like that. It's got antimatic shielding, fleet, brutal charge, living icon of the Legion, resilient, and wrath in betrayal. Uh, this unit may only be taken as part of a loyalist faction army, it's fair enough. Uh, brutal Charge, um, it gets D3 Hammer of Wrath attacks on the charge, that's quite handy. Uh, units with the Legion as a start, he's Ultramarine Special Rule, with at least one model within 12 inches of the Honored te Telemachus game, plus one to their Assault Resolution scored, and may add plus one to their Sweeping Advance rolls. Nah, that's, that's alright, might make him better at winning combats and stuff like that. Resilient. Whenever on the tele Telemachus suffers a penetrating hit, their owning player may ask their opponent to re-roll the, uh, the result rolled on the vehicle damage chart or the destroyer damage chart. <laughs> However, the second result always stands even if it's worse than the first. So that's whenever he takes a penetrating hit. That's pretty good. So if someone's got a lance cannon and they roll a six, you go, no, oh, can you re-roll that, please? That's not bad. Not bad. Wrath and Betrayal. Uh, Honored Telemachus has the Hatred. Uh, Traitor's Legion as the Starly Special Rule, which applies to all units chosen from uh, Traitor Legion as the Starly Forces. Uh, if I remember rightly, Hatred means you re-roll ones to hit. 
I might be wrong. I overlooked him at first, but I'm thinking a bit more about this. Only downside is he's like 255 points. Um, I'd be kind of intrigued. You can't really customise him either. He, he is that way, so... Would there be any good? I don't know. I'll have to give that a test run and see what happens. Uh, Locutus... Locutorus... Tyrus... Storm Squad. So it's 185 points. You get five guys in the unit. Uh, they jump infantry. Uh, you've got a uh, strike leader, which is a character. They have a bolt pistol, power sword, jump pack, fragging crack grenades, and artificer armor. That's crazy. So five guys with jump packs, all with artificer armor. Okay. Legion has a style ultramarine, opening, opening salvo, and precision intervention. So uh, the squad can include... Sorry, that's 185 points if I didn't mention that already. The squad may include uh, five additional ones, so you can have up to 10, and it's 20 points per model. So um, for 285 points, you'll have 10 guys with artificer armor, jump packs, and power swords. That's pretty nasty. Um, for every five models in the squad, a single Locutorus may exchange their bolt pistol for one of the following, Plasma Pistol or a Hand Flamer. Plasma Pistol's 15 points, Hand Flamer's 10. Uh, the Strike Leader may exchange their Power Sword for a Power Axe or a single Lightning Claw. Uh, also a Power Fist. Okay. Power, uh, power Axe is free, Lightning Claw is 5 points, and a Power Fist is 5 points. I'm going to go with a Power Fist just to give him a little bit of punching power. Uh, he can also exchange his bolt pistol for a plasma pistol or a hand flamer 15 points for the plasma 10 points for the flamer and he can also have uh, melter bombs and a combat shield if he wants that's quite handy that would be quite interesting give him a combat shield as well so not just a 6 up in van. maybe, maybe not so, opening salvo, on the turn in which the squad arrives via deep strike, it may fire its pistol type weapons twice in the shooting phase. This must be against the same target. Characters who have joined the unit do not gain this ability. That's quite cool. So, if you've got plasma pistols, you can effectively fire four plasma pistol shots, and then you'd have... Uh, well, say, if, if you gave three of them, so your Lord and two other dudes plasma pistols, you get six plasma pistol shots on the turn you arrive and that would be 14 bolt pistol shots it's not bad their weapon skill BS4, uh, weapon skill 4, BS4 strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 1 initiative 4, attacks 1 apart from the strike leader who's got 2, leadership 8, apart from the strike leader which is 9 and they've got 2 up armor save um, Precision intervention, this is the other thing. When arriving via deep strike, the unit may re-roll the scatter dice to see where it lands, but must accept the second roll's result. So, it's effectively got a re-roll for the deep strike. That's quite handy as well. So hopefully you'll, um, if you're going to land on something and it goes wrong, then hopefully you've got a chance of sorting out and correcting it. So, I think these guys will be worth it. Um... I think you'd have to be careful where you deep strike them, make sure they land correctly in the right spot. Um, they'll be able to take a little bit, but they're not going to be able to take a lot. So that'll be an uh, interesting thing. Also as well, because when they deep strike, they're going to be a cluster like that. Anything with a pie plate, something like a Medusa will just wipe them off. So I'm teaching you how to kill these guys as well. Um, but yeah, they can deep strike, so maybe later on in the game these guys might be better at turning up so full mentaris terminator strike squad these guys are interesting i've had discussions about these guys these base guys basically copied what the iron warriors did um i can't remember what the iron warriors squad is called but yeah they um they're 225 points for five of them uh they come with a power more combi bolter uh Peritarch Targeter Peritarch Peritarch, I don't know Cataphracty Pattern Terminator Armor uh, Legion has a start It's Ultramarines They can take a Land Raider Phobos Land Raider Proteus as a dedicated transport If it numbers 5 models uh, Or a Spartan If it numbers between 6 and 10 models So he could take a Spartan as a dedicated transport 
that might be quite handy but I don't think you can use these guys for that so let's read out the stats the WS4 BS5 so they hit on twos I just knocked the camera strength 4 toughness 4 wounds 1 initiative 4 2 attacks 2 attacks standard uh, leadership 8 uh, apart from the guys 9 and they got 2 of palm safe uh, if it's cataphracty um, it's cataphracty armor so they got a 4 up and vulnerable save as well Okay, you can have uh, five additional um, Terminators at 35 points each. Now, you probably want to go up to eight with this, so that would take you up to 105, 230, so it'd be 330 points for just the bog standard, guys, but you don't want to have just the bog standard, guys. Uh, any, mail, any model may exchange their power more for a power sword or a power axe, power axes I would think are the way forward with these guys any model in the score may exchange their power maul for a power fist for five points yeah probably not couldn't be bothered these guys are not combat dudes um, all of the model uh, this is where it gets interesting all of the models in the score may exchange their combi bolter for one of the following heavy weapons if the option is taken all models in the squad must be identically equipped okay so they can take a combi melter so all of them have combi melters um, a reaper also cannon for 20 points each now if you have that if you have eight of them uh, there's a reason why I say eight that's an extra 160 points on top of the 300 so you're looking at 490 points if you go with that so it's nearly it's, say it's 500 points basically for um, eight dudes with auto cannons, and they're hitting on twos. Uh, still, sixteen strength, seven shots. Nothing really to be sniffed at. However, this is more. Uh, so long as they've not exchanged their combi bolters for heavy weapons, all of the models in the squad may be equipped with cyclone missile launchers in addition to their normal armament. If this option is taken, all models in the squad must be identically equipped. So it's thirty points. For that uh, do, do, do. okay there's also an interesting note note that models may fire their combi bolters in addition to their cyclone launchers in the shooting phase so you can shoot both which is quite handy so i would go with these cyclone missile launchers and there is a reason why because they're better um so let's think about that um eight times 30 is math help me uh, 3 times 8 is 24, so it's 240 points. So it's 240 points on top of your three, 330. So, oh, do, do, maths, don't fail me now. Uh, so it's 370, 570. So it's 570 points for this 8-man squad. Um, I'd suggest taking the 8-man squad mainly for... It gives you some perks here. So, this Paratark Targeter, uh, sophisticated weapons tracking augury system, which is yeah, blah blah blah. Okay, so long as it uh, at least two models equipped with the Paratark Targeter in the unit, the entire unit gains the night vision special rule. That's one. So long as at least five models in the unit are with the Paratark Targeter are in the unit, the entire unit gains the Tank Hunter's special rule. That's two. That makes it awesome. So long as eight models equipped in the Paratark target are in the unit, the, um, the opposing player makes his cover saves at minus one against the unit. That's three. That's why you want eight. Mainly because you definitely want Tank Hunter, but having three extra models to soak up some wounds and stuff like that is definitely worthwhile. So... Um, your cyclone missile launcher can fire in two ways you can fire a frag which is 48 inch strength 4 ap6 heavy 2 blast 3 inch or crack which pretty much most people can use 48 inch range strength 8 ap3 heavy 2 so and combined with tank hunter and these guys are bs5 they're going to be ripping stuff to pieces um they're not well saying that even against spartans and stuff like that they they won't hurt front armor if they've got a flare shield 
side armor. They could possibly even glance a, a land raider or a Spartan to death. So, yeah, these guys could do it, but really expensive. What was that, 570 points? If I got the points wrong, I have maths is not working for me today. Um, let's look at some other things, and then what we'll do is we'll do Gilliman on a separate video, because my voice is given up here. So, Remus Ventanus, he's in the books, he's at 155 points, he's got weapon skill 5, BS 5, strength 4, toughness 4, 3 wounds, uh, initiative 5, 3 attacks, leadership 10, and 3 up armor save. Uh, he's got an iron halo, power saw, bolt pistol, melt bombs, nuncio vox, frag and crack grenades, legion, legion standard, and power armor. So, uh, he's got Legion as the start, he's Ultramarines, Master of the Legion, Independent Character, Warlord, if Remus Ventaris is the army's Warlord, he has the Resolute Planning trait rather than rolling randomly. Uh, he's got Adamantium Will and Cunning Strategist. And he can only be taken as a Loyalist. So, uh, Cunning Strategist, whilst Remus is alive, the opposing player has minus one modifier to all reserve rolls, and the only player may choose to re-roll any reserve rolls made, whether failed or successful. That's quite handy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Resolute Planning, uh, the Hallmark of Reader, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so both Captain Remus Ventanus and units with the Legion as a spot Astartes Ultramarine special rule in the army with Remus Ventaris as its warlord had the stubborn special rule while they have at least one model within three inches of an objective. So these guys will be quite good at holding stuff down. Um I'm not overly keen on him, but I'm sure other people will find a use for him. He might come in really handy in my Legion, because I'm deep striking, having reserve rolls would be quite handy. We'll see, though. We'll see. Um, right. Damocles Rhino. So this is the other thing. Uh, it's uh, BS4, front armor 11, side armor 11, rear armor 11, pole points 3. So Rhino, basically. Um, a Damocles... Oh, let's read out what it is. It's a tank. It's a twin link bolter. It's got geolocator beacon, a command vox relay, searchlight, smoke launchers, focus bombardment, special deployment. Uh, it can carry six models. Um, it may not carry models with the bulky or very bulky or extremely bulky special rules. It's got no fire points, one access point on either side of the hull and one at the rear. Uh, it can have extra armor, pencil mounted, heavy bolter, hunter killer missile, and dozer blade. Its special rules Geolocator beaten, units arriving via deep strike, which are part of the force containing Damocles, do not need to roll to scatter if they choose to arrive within 4 inches of the Damocles. Sorry, within 24 inches of the Damocles. So that's quite handy. So you could surround this thing if you wanted stuff to come in and, as a shield, you could just plonk these guys down. Uh, the Damocles allows its controlling player to add plus one or two or subtract minus one from the result. Uh, sorry, the results of reserve rolls they make while the Damocles is in play. Uh, in addition, should enemy models suffer a deep strike mishap when a Damocles is in play, the roll suffers a minus one modifier. Okay, so that makes things a bit interesting. Focus bombardment. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Once per game, the Damocles uh, clamp, uh, sorry, the Damocles can call down the bombardment just as if it were firing a weapon in the shooting phase. The Damocles cannot move in the same turn this is done. The focus bombardment is an unlimited range strength 8 AP3 ordnance 1 lance twin linked barrage large blast 5. So twin linked is a key thing and lance is a key thing as well there because that makes stuff like Spartans you could actually do some damage to it um, you could immobilize it, you couldn't pop it though because it's only AP3 so yeah interesting um, okay but it is ordnance, you roll 2d6 pick the highest, so that should be quite handy uh, special deployment, uh, not to one Damocles command roads may be taken in a legion as the start is crusade legion army as a non-compulsory HQ choice uh, in any force over 1,000 points. 
In addition, the Ultramarines Legion originated the design and utilized it extensively for command and control purposes, and so may also take a single additional Damocles Rhino as a dedicated transport from Master of Signal console in the Ultramarines Legion primary detachment. So, all other legions can only have one of these. Um, yep, okay. But the Ultramarines can take another one of these as a dedicated transport for the Master of Signals. So you can have a Master of Signals in one of these. Um, and this is only 100 points. So you can have a Master of Signals called down a bombardment. You can have this that calls down a bombardment. And you can have another one of these which calls down a bombardment. So you could, you could possibly wreck the place. But we'll see. This is Gilliman. I'm running out of steam here, guys, so I'm going to call it that. We'll do a whole separate video on the big man himself, um, what he might be good. Um, I hope that's giving you a bit of a flavour for what you can do. I haven't gone massively into the tactics. I tried to do it on the fly as we've been going along, so we'll see. If you've got any queries, questions, let me know. But uh, I've basically just read them out and told you what I would do with them. Um, these Terminators just sitting back and using them as gun platforms. Um, because they just wreck stuff. Uh, the deep striking unit, you'd have to be careful with using them, but they could be pretty nasty for messing up everything else. Wouldn't throw them against command squads, but throw them against other tactical units and they just wreck them. Um, Telemachus, he could actually be a bit more brutal than I thought. Um, probably send him in with some of the guys on the assault line. Suzerain, uh, Cessus Assault, Castus Assault Ram, sorry. And then whether or not you use these things. So, yeah, that's the Ultramarines in 30k. That's my review of it. That's what I think of the um, rules. Gilliman will do a whole another thing on him because uh, I think Primarchs need their own kind of um, video about it. And my throat is dying here. So, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Take it steady. There'll be more coming out soon. And hopefully, there won't be such a bigger gap as last time. But take it steady, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.